In World War II, Hungary was the most distinguished on the Eastern Front. However, despite this, in the victorious 1945th, the Allies had every reason to hope that Hitler's former ally would not pointlessly resist, but simply lay down its arms. However, this did not happen thanks to the inter-party squabbles within the country, the winner of which was the bloodiest Hungarian executioner and dictator, Fernek Shalasi. The horse the regime and the conflict with Shalasi. The Kingdom of Hungary was ruled by an appointed regent Miklas Horthy during the 1930s. What kind of ruler he was is not particularly interesting, but something else is interesting here. After the National Socialist Party came to power in Germany, the ideas of National Socialism became more than just popular in Europe. And Hungary was no exception. The most massive and influential Nazi party in the kingdom was the National Will Party, which was founded and headed in 1930 by Ferenc Szilassi. According to his beliefs, Szilassi was somewhat of a local version of Alfred Rosenberg, the ideologue of Nazism. Only in the interpretation of Szilassi it was called Hungarism, the superiority of pure Magyars over the other people of the kingdom. Naturally, Horthy himself was not very sympathetic to Szilassi's extremist views. So a serious struggle broke out between the ruling and opposition forces. By its nature, it was not so much a confrontation of ideologies as a banal squabble for power. However, Shalassi's radicalism frightened even Horthy. As a result, the party was banned, but Shalassi immediately created a new one. Arrow crossed. After Hungary joined the tripartite pact, Germany, Italy and Japan, supporters of Shalassi happily approved the new course of the government, declaring that in the international area they would carry out this course much more successfully than the Horde. Therefore, it is not surprising that Horde did not want to strengthen his rivals and began massive repressions against Shalassi's supporters. It soon got to the point that the Arrow Cross party was also banned and its leader sent to jail. However, after the victory of the Arrows in the election, Shalassi was released but the confrontation with Horthy continued. It should be noted here that the Arrow Cross and its policy were fully approved by Hitler personally, and the Fernak Shalassi's party was directed and led from Berlin by the strong German hand through its agents in Hungary. In any case, Hitler did not intend to change leadership before the attack on the USSR, especially since Hungary sent an army of more than 200,000 soldiers and officers to the Eastern Front. Later, however, the Hungarian government's ardor waned, both at the front, where the army's fighting ability was reduced to almost nothing, and in Hungary itself, where the authorities diligently concealed the scale of the tragedy at the front from their citizens. At the same time, Horthy himself decided to drastically change his entire foreign policy. First, he refused to send another army to the front. Secondly, he began to look for options of honorable surrender and withdrawal from the war and the conclusion of a truce with the anti-Hitler coalition allies. However, the dictator expectation did not come true. Following the results of the Tehran Conference in 1943, the liberation from Nazism in Eastern Europe was entrusted to the USSR. The Horthy announced on October 15, 1944, that he intended to conclude a truce. In fact, recognizing the surrender of Hungary. The reaction in Germany was very harsh. The Nazi kidnapped Horthy's son, and to save him, the dictator was forced to resign and hand over power to Shalazi. Moreover, after Horthy's speech, the Shalazi followers practically launched a military coup in the country. As historian Laszlo Kontler wrote, by the evening of October 15th, the Arrow Cross militia captured all the strategically important points in Budapest. Under pressure from blackmailers, Horthy withdrew his own appeal the next day, appointing Shalasi as prime minister and resigning as regent. He was taken to Germany and taken into custody for, quote, security purposes, and Shalasi declared himself a full-fledged head of state. Short but bloody reign of Shalasi. By the very first decree, Shalasi cancelled the statements and declarations of Horthy, and then began the mass mobilization of entire male population aged from 12 to 70 into the army. Also, the leadership of the troops was transferred directly to Berlin, and the Hungarian general staff was in fact turned into a satellite, 
transmitting orders of the German military. But this was even worse than the Hitler's Germany. Salashi, faithfully following Hitler's instruction, began to actively resolve the so-called Jewish question. More than 80 Jews were sent for forced labor in Germany. During the so-called Death March, most of the doomed died. All the rest died from inhumane conditions during the construction of anti-tank fortifications and digging ditches. In Budapest itself, as part of the solution of Jewish question, a huge ghetto was created. The prisoners were used, among other things, during the construction of the Budapest defense line. However, despite the fierce resistance, the Red Army slowly but surely moved forward. But despite this, Schlesig continued the policy of liquidating Jews, gypsies, and all those who supported the rejection of resistance and surrender of the advancing troops. The total number of those killed in the short time of Shalasi reign is not known for certain. However, in Budapest there is an eerie monument on the embankment of the Danube River, hundreds of cast pairs of shoes. The Salashis continued to crack down on those who, according to the views of their leader, had no right to leave. The condemned were forced to take off their shoes, then they were taken to the bridge and tied up by several people. Then one was killed. Falling, he dragged the people tied to him into the water. And all the confiscated shoes were immediately sent for sale by the Salash's followers. According to some estimates, at least 50,000 people were exterminated from the Jewish population. It was recognized by many historians after the war that the Salashi regime became one of the most monstrous form of the government in Europe. The short reign of Salashi in the unliberated part of the country was one of the most ugly forms of the fascist dictatorship. Supporters of Shalasi took the part of mass terror and plunder of national property. With the help of the Nazi occupiers, they exterminated tens of thousands of people and ruined the country. By the way, the dictator himself left Budapest on December 11, 1944, leading the troops from the city of Sambathi, and on March 28, after the capture of the capital of Hungary on February 13th and the almost total liberation of the country, Ferenc Lassi fled to Austria. Trial and sentencing. However, he did not succeed in hiding in Austria either. On May 6, 1945, he was detained by representatives of American troops and handed over to the new Hungarian government. On October 3rd, together with his closest supporters, Shalasi appeared before the Budapest court. The trial lasted almost four months and ended on February 26th when Shalasi was given the last word. The former dictator spoke for four and a half hours, but that did not affect the verdict. Shalasi and three of his closest associates were sentenced to death remote to long prison terms. In total, members of the Arrow Cross Party involved more than 6,000 people for various crimes. The party itself was banned by a decree of the Hungarian government on February 26, 1946. On March 12, 1946, Shalasi and three of his associates were hanged in the center square of Budapest with a huge crowd of people. 